Drew asks. Lightning Network and Bitcoin Core. It has become clear that the Lightning Network is the winning choice for scaling the Bitcoin Network. As such, do the developers for the base protocol and the developers for the second layer communicate with each other? Are they actively working together? Um, that is a great question, Drew. So I, I think Lightning Network is uh, one of the choices for scaling. I don't know if it's the winning choice, other than in uh, kind of popularity terms. But because there are many possibilities for scaling, and scaling will be addressed by many different factors being scaled uh, over time. But in terms of your question, the developers of the base protocol and developers for second layer do communicate with each other. In fact, there are a number of um, a number of things that can be done in the base protocol to make uh, Lightning better. There have been a number of Bitcoin improvement proposals for that. Probably the most important development in that space, which has implications not just for Lightning, but for a certain class of smart contracts in general, is the implementation of a new signature hashing type called SIG hash no input. And so traditionally, with, uh, with signatures, uh, you can define by the signature type whether you are signing all of the inputs and all of the outputs in a transaction, whether you are signing just one input and one output, uh, one input only and no outputs. And there wasn't a way to do it so that you could sign um, just the outputs and no inputs. And part of the reason for that is because that's a dangerous uh, mechanism. You don't want to use that if you have a single signer address because um, then that, that creates dangerous conditions. So in the case of Lightning, however, that kind of functionality becomes very useful for the implementation of a protocol called L2, E L T O O. And L2 is a new type of payment channel, um, and it uh, is more efficient uh, and requires kind of less work in the client than the payment channels we have today, which we probably call Poondrija. Uh, payment channels, traditional payment channels, where you have to have a penalty mechanism in order to ensure that a previous state cannot be broadcast. And that's for that reason, you need to be online and you need to have watchtowers that watch for your channels to make sure that the other party didn't try to broadcast the prior state. L2 actually does away with all of that because uh, it makes it impossible to broadcast the prior state. Therefore, you don't need a penalty. Therefore, you don't need watchtowers. Um, and so it's a, a big improvement, but it does require this change in the core protocol. So SIG hash no input is one of the features that's being considered for the next uh, big soft fork, which is the uh, uh, the upgrade of SegWit to the scripting version v1. So we're currently running SegWit v0. Um, there is an upgrade being planned for v1, which includes things like Taproot, Graftroot, Mast, uh, Schnorr signatures, and SIG hash no input. And SIG hash no input is a feature specifically, um, uh, specifically being introduced in order to facilitate better implementations of the Lightning Network payment channels. So yes, there is collaboration between Core and Lightning. Milan asks, the locking and unlocking Bitcoin script for Bitcoin Lightning. I have found great high-level descriptions of how the Bitcoin Lightning Network functions. However, none where how it looks like on the Bitcoin script level. And um, so the question here is: How does the script inside the Lightning transaction look like? For unlocking, there are a number of different scenarios. The sender could close the channel and release the funds. The receiver could close the channel and release the funds. And the channel could get closed through um, through some kind of uh, uncooperative or timeout close. Let me see if I can uh, very quickly um, find uh, the specific bolt. Um, so the answer you're looking for is straightforward. There is a specification for uh, Lightning called Basics of Lightning Technology or Bolt. Um, Bolt is um, a specification of how the various parts of the interoperable uh, Lightning network that is currently deployed works. And we're currently at the first version of Bolt, and there are a number of additional uh, versions 
that uh, are being worked on to progress this specification, Bolt 1.1, etc. Et um, the Bolt standard consists of, I believe, 11 different sub-documents. Bolt 1, Bolt 2, Bolt 3, Bolt 4, and each one specifies a different part of the protocol. So some describe how the peer-to-peer -peer network, how routing works, how um, invoices are formatted, how uh, DNS is bootstrapped, how channel discovery happens, etc. etc. The one you're looking for is called Bolt 3. Bolt number 3 is the script format within uh, the transactions. You can find this at github.com lightning network slash lightning dash RFC slash Bolt 3. Uh, Bolt 3 uh, is titled Bitcoin Transaction and Script formats, which details the exact format of on-chain transactions which both sides need to agree on to ensure signatures are valid. And it has the scripts that are used inside the commitment transaction outputs for all of the cases that you are talking about, and how the closing transactions work. Um, and that's where you'll find that script. Enjoy! It's some fun reading. You'll learn a lot about the scripting language. Uh, it's not easy to read, I can warn you about that, um, because it's been optimized to reduce the amount of data being used. Essentially, the script itself has been gradually refined and optimized and polished and compressed, so that it does the thing we want to do, but not in a way that's very verbose, so that it cuts down on the space that's used on the blockchain. So it's a bit difficult to read, but uh, enjoy that. Taurus asks, is custodial lightning wallet safe? Hi Andreas, I recently came across Blue Wallet and was elated with the co-founder's motivation behind it. I believe this could really push the adoption of lightning transaction usage. The user experience just works for common people. The only downside being it's a custodial wallet. However, User experience is everything. I guess I want to understand how safe is custodial wallet to be used for day-to-day -day expenses. Um, well, here's the thing. For the vast majority of users, this is a fundamental user experience choice, and people often compare the the practical choice to some kind of unachievable ideal. And I hear a lot of people making comments like. Oh, the only way you should ever have a wallet is if you have your own, your own wallet that controls the keys connected to your own node over Tor that's backed up using the cold storage, whatever. If you go into that kind of conversation, what people will do is they'll switch off. The vast majority of users cannot handle that level of complexity. What are they going to do? They're either not going to use cryptocurrencies, which is a possibility if they don't need it, or worse, they're going to go to a custodial wallet that's stored on an exchange, which is worse than this example. So, I would say um, that a custodial lightning wallet is a bit better than a custodial exchange wallet. Um, and the reason it's a bit better is because it allows people to experience um, the, the, the speed and uh, security of Lightning, but it has the fundamental downside of being custodial, which means you have this massive counterparty risk. Uh, and the massive counterparty risk is that either the software is compromised, or the, the vendor is compromised, or the developers are compromised, and you lose the money that's in this custodial wallet. So, as a bridge between now and the future, where um, more people want to experience Lightning wallets and use it, but they don't have yet the availability of good wallets, um, they don't yet have the infrastructure to build their own, or use their own node, or do any of these other things. Um, it's it's better than nothing, honestly, and I think it's it's important to realize that this is the same fundamental conundrum we have with Lightning, which is that um, the alternative to Lightning isn't on-chain. The alternative to Lightning is payments uh, between custodial wallets on the provider's network using a SQL database. So the alternative to Lightning for most users is not to go on-chain and control their own keys and run their own nodes. Um, it is in fact 
um, to use a Coinbase wallet to pay another Coinbase wallet, at which point they're not using crypto anymore. Uh, they're using a SQL database. So, um, from that perspective, I think it's an acceptable compromise for small amounts of money for experimentation for now. Long term, if you really want to get the most benefit out of using Lightning Wallet, the same rule applies as applies to Bitcoin. Your keys, your coins, not your keys, not your coins. Thank you.